All right, now that's what we're talking about. So it feels like we just gave birth. Yeah, it's super, super nasty from being submerged for God knows how long. So this bilge, disgusting. Oh yeah, she's alive. This is about shot. All right, now that's what we're talking about. Brought this girl back to life. Whew, that was a lot of work. But uh, yeah, it did a great job. And I have no complaints whatsoever. Brought the white back and uh, took the uh, all that nastiness out. So there's a few spots I'll probably have to go back over with the magic eraser, cause it works magical. And um, yeah, time to get the child out and start doing some other cleaning. So, we'll see how this turns out. Ah, oh, I might try the teak first. Let's see how that works, but probably not. So it feels like we just gave birth. We just got this huge thingy. Which is a from, small one. From that little hole. Since we had all that water in the bilge that was just sitting there for a long time, I need to double check and make sure that our bilge pump works. So I'm gonna be getting ready to hook up the batteries today so that I can um, double check that and make sure that it's actually working and stuff. So I already checked the wiring and everything, that all looked good. Um, now I just have to clean it, because. Yeah, it's super, super nasty from being submerged for God knows how long. So I'm gonna work on cleaning that up and yeah, put it back in and then test it to see if it works. If it works, freaking sweet. And then we can just kind of take it from there. That way we can at least know that shit's working. All right, so we hooked up the uh, house batteries here. So, so those are a little bit different than the, um, the Rocket L105s that we had uh, last time. Um, reason is, is because all of those batteries we put in the van. So I'm leaving them in the van because they're still running the fridge until I get everything set up in here. And then I'll move the fridge in here and put all four batteries in here. And I'm gonna get those two batteries and put in the van for our son to take when he goes, um, when he takes the van to do his trip. So now is the big question. Now that everything's hooked back up, we're gonna start checking the wiring and everything. And let's see what happens. Excuse the mess because we still haven't put up half the stuff here. But, oh yeah, she's alive. She's alive. That makes me feel a little bit better because um, when the lights come on, that means all the wiring's working. Now I just have to test the bilge pump and see if it works. And then if it works, then we should be good to go. And then I can go ahead and uh, clean all that up and resubmerge the, uh, the bilge or the bilge pump. All right, so... Um, now that uh, I got the uh, bilge pump all cleaned off because it was disgusting and I'll um, actually show you down in the bilge how because it was submerged for so long that I actually needed to take it out and, and like I said it was just disgusting. So I'm going to see if I can go ahead and get this all cleaned out. And I'm going to test the, since the wires were submerged for God knows how long. I'm going to, uh, I luckily, thank God, put in tinned wire when I redid it when we were back in Fort Myers. So when I switched it from that other pump that had the float switch to the submersible one, I went ahead and um, did that. So the wiring is good. Um, now I'm just going to test it to see how well it works. But let me show you this build, just how dirty it is, because it is nasty. It's yeah it's gross so yeah as you can see this bilge disgusting 
It is absolutely disgusting in here. So once I get this bilge pump working, I can actually clean all of this out. And then I'll be able to scrub it, get it all clean, and um, hopefully get this to where it'll be a nice clean bilge again. One of the things that we needed to do um, was actually paint the bilge. So this is a great opportunity to go ahead and scrub it all out and then clean it, let it dry, and then paint it so that we don't have to worry about that. Probably also going to go ahead and paint some of the parts here um, in the engine compartment as well so that it's just as clean as I can possibly get it. And then, um, yeah, move on to the next project. So let's test this and see if these wires work. Oh, yeah. Means we got fire. She's alive. She's alive. Woohoo. I'm going to be saying that a lot today. Thank God for tinned wire because that saved me having to pull and or repull all new wiring for the bilge pump. So, yes. These, these little things, man, when you're just like looking at something and it just seems completely overwhelming. When you look at something and you come in and the bilge is full and the pump's not working and the wires are submerged and you didn't even have the batteries and the, the thing with the windlass and... Oh man, so I feel so much better. It's just these little things that allow me to like finish this project and move on to the next so that I can continue doing what I need to do to just get all this crap out of here. So while she's doing the story of her life, which is scraping teak, I am going to test this bilge. I'm gonna see if the sensor, everything still works all right. So let's put it in here and see if it starts pumping. Yes, no, maybe. Yeah! Woohoo! Look at that! See if it shuts off automatically. Not shutting off yet. There it goes. Yeah! All right. So we have a working bilge again, bilge pump. Woohoo! So freaking ecstatic about that. I was really thinking that that thing got trashed by being just. Yeah, like burn out or something. Yeah, either burn out or smoked or whatever. I wasn't sure. The wiring, you know, just everything. So very, very happy that that worked. So now I can actually move on to actually cleaning and doing the stuff that I need to do to get this all cleaned up. So, since I was just redoing everything and cleaning the bilge out, which is so much of a relief to have clean, the um, the old float switch that was in there before was still in there, so I never took it out when I replaced the bilge pump last time. So I did take it out, but this was the crud that was in there. Just all of that nastiness. So, yeah. As you can see, the re if that's any indication of what the rest of the bilge look like, then um, yeah, that's you can get an idea how much it sucked to clean that thing. So yeah, time to toss this baby and forget about it. Yay! Bilge pump scared the crap out of me because it came on and I have it still open. Look at that nice clean bilge. <laughs> scared the crap out of me because it's open so it just did it right at my feet um, and normally it's not that loud one of the other things I needed to do today was every time we turn the water pressure on for the uh, water pump we were slowly getting water poured into the bilge kind of find out what it was from was the high pressure valve the high pressure relief valve on the hot water heater so I was able to take that out. Luckily, this is something that's pretty cheap and easy to get at any hardware store because it's just standard, pretty much, water heater. And, um, yeah, so I'll be able to do that. So that's going to fix that problem so that we're not getting that. And speaking of water dripping into the boat, remember, I'm not sure if I talked about it too much before, but I've been needing to adjust the stuffing box. 
and it was just leaking too much and it was as tight as it would go and I was thinking that it needed to be repacked but I couldn't get it loose to figure it out and I was thinking because of the age of the boat and because of just the buildup and that was on the actual stuffing box itself on the nuts that it I'm just I was gonna have to repack it and just take it all apart so I got that apart today and kind of find out it was just build up that just really got stuck on there and I think that had to do with when we bought the boat um, it was leaking around the stuffing box hose so it was actually getting salt water in there and it really corroded it and stuff so got all that cleaned up now it's working now I was able to adjust it fine but the stuffing is brand new so I'm like I'm just gonna leave it in there um, and if for some crazy chance I need to change it I'll be able to do that still just cover up the hole, cover up the shaft on the outside even if we're in the water and do it that way and then replace the stuffing material. So, or the packing material. Also, one thing that really had me worried was when we were coming up here from Key West, I noticed that um, I went to clean a strainer one day and I could not get the um, raw water intake for the engine to close. So the through hole I thought was frozen shut which I didn't get because it's just, I, I, every month I exercise all of my, it's like routine. I top off the batteries and I exercise the through holes and Madeline helps me go through a whole checklist of stuff that she's come up with that helps us do all that. And then the, so I was thinking that it was just jacked up you know, it's messed up. It's got something in there. It's old. It's an old school Groco. Um, we replaced all of the others on our last haul out. So, but I didn't do that one because it was working fine and it still was, it still looked in really good condition, but I was panicking because we had the motor all the way through, uh, most of the ICW and into all the way down the Okeechobee to get here to Indian town. So I was a little panicked that something was going to happen and I was going to get something stuck in the strainer and then I wasn't going to be able to close the through hole. And my other option was to take a go out, jump in the water, put a plug in, then come back in the boat and blah, 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 and get all, get it out that way. So I was really not looking forward to that. And luckily, it didn't happen. We were able to motor here without any problems. Knock on wood. <laughs> and uh, that. But so today, I, and I was giving it a last ditch effort because since it's a Groco, I can take it all apart. So I actually just took it all apart, and it's working fine now. So I don't have to replace that one. Thank God, because I really can't afford <laughs> keep little things keep breaking. It already cost us quite a bit and extra time sitting here with all the cleaning and all of this and that and the extra set of batteries and everything so it's it's good to know that we're able to kind of get things back up and running now our list is starting to get short so that we can get back in the water and once we get back in the water it'll be significantly less to work on the boat plus we can actually get every we'll have everything that we need to actually go and then we'll just be able to fix things underway so yeah I am looking forward to finishing this day with a success and going by Lowe's and getting another one of these so that we can turn on our water pressure and call it a day. We'll be good. All right, so after scrubbing the uh, bilge out and all this stuff in the past couple of days and the, the water draining and the leaks and just all of that, I was finally able to disregard the mess. It's horrible in here. Um, now we have a freshly painted bilge. Isn't that one beautiful, beautiful sight? It actually, we were gonna actually paint it like way back when we were in Key West um, before we hopped to the Bahamas, but with COVID and everything, all the, closed, all the stores closed down and you actually couldn't get to the store. So we said to heck with it, we'll just do it later. So now is later and that's done. So now I just get to go ahead and replace this today so that I can go ahead and fix our water leak in the hot water tank. So I'm going to be dealing with that here in a few minutes. And uh, so far, everything's been going pretty good. So, I mean, knock on wood, I'm not really unhappy with how the day is going so far, even though it looks like it's going to rain. Yeah. It's forecasted for thunderstorms this afternoon, so I'm trying to get as much done as I can. Um, and then uh, just keep moving on with whatever I can do and stuff. So, all right, let's go ahead and knock this out too.
So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be taking both of our hatches. We're going to start uh, taking out all the sealant so that we can put in the new ones that we bought, which we bought some, uh, bada bing, polycarbonate. We had already done a pattern for it before we left, and we're going to be taking that and replacing this because, yeah, this is about shot. And this fan has really never, ever worked, and it leaked like crazy. So, yeah, I'm just going to be getting started on that. And instead of, uh, well, I'll talk about that up there. All right, so in order to get this out, um, I got to cut out all of this sealant. So I'm going to take, instead of sitting here with a knife and cutting for about three or four hours, I'm going to use one of my favorite little things here that I like to use with a bit that's just deep enough to get in here. And I can go ahead and uh, strip out all that sealant and stuff like that. So yeah, let me get to work here because as you can see, this was, this has been a mess. So. We're just going to try to get all this out, clean all this up, and then once I get it down to the bare metal, I can clean it up with some good acetone and uh, sand it down so I get a good seal. Put in the new sealant, re and and um, then I'm going to take this one and just cut it out. I mean, put it in. Yeah, we're good to go. So it'll be a little bit, but hopefully this uh, Dremel tool will cut out a lot of that work. And... Um, should be hopefully pretty effortless. Famous last words on a boat. <laughs> 